U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is sending bomber aircraft, fighter jets and more Navy warships to the Middle East to bolster the U.S. presence in the region, the Pentagon announced, as an aircraft carrier and its ships are preparing to leave. Austin ordered several B-52 Stratofortress bomber aircraft, a squadron of fighter jets, tanker aircraft and Navy destroyers to deploy to the Middle East, said Major General Pat Ryder, Pentagon Press Secretary, in a statement, according to Associated Press. He said they will begin arriving in the region in the coming months, as the B aircraft carrier Abraham Lincoln begins to head home. This comes as reports Iran may retaliate following Israel's strikes last week that took out Iran's three remaining S-300 air defense systems. The strategic move from the U.S. military arrives as Israel's conflict with Hamas in Gaza and engagements with Hezbollah in Lebanon have recently intensified. The Biden administration has been clear about its position to both defend Israel and safeguard American interests in the region. It is unclear if the military resources sent will be in Israel, Iran, or elsewhere at this time. The long-range, nuclear-capable B-52 bombers have frequently been sent to the Middle East in past displays of U.S. resolve toward Iran. The U.S. recently deployed B-2 stealth bombers to Yemen, striking Houthi targets in October. South Korea considers sending military observers to Ukraine due to North Korea's involvement in the war. Reuters reports, a representative of the South Korean president stated that Seoul is considering sending a group of military observers to Ukraine to monitor and analyze the deployment of North Korean troops by Russia at the front lines. According to the official, at least 11,000 North Korean soldiers have been dispatched to Russia, with over 3,000 of them moved closer to the front lines. The South Korean presidential office explained that Pyongyang could gain valuable experience for its forces involved in the war on Russia's side, which poses a direct military threat to South Korea. So it is incumbent upon us to analyze and monitor the activities of North Korean troops against our ally. The official noted, Russia is deploying North Korean troops in the war against Ukraine. According to Ukrainian intelligence, North Korea has transferred 12,000 soldiers to Russia, with some already sent to the Kursk region. The Financial Times, citing Ukrainian intelligence, reported that about 3,000 North Korean soldiers have been deployed to the Kursk region, located just 50 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. Ukrainian military officials have expressed doubts about the combat readiness of North Korean forces, noting that they have never participated in modern warfare. North Korean soldiers may be being readied for a move to the front lines of Russia's war against Ukraine after being taught basic Russian commands, South Korean lawmakers told reporters, citing the country's intelligence officials. South Korea's National Intelligence Service is now watching for the possibility of some North Korean personnel, including high-ranking military officials, moving to the front lines, said lawmakers Lee Seong kun and Park sun Won, who were briefed by the NIS during a closed-door meeting of a parliamentary intelligence committee. Russia is teaching North Korean soldiers about 100 basic military words like fire and in position, the lawmaker said. However, they added it's clear that North Korean soldiers are struggling to communicate and it's not clear whether they'll be able to bridge the language gap. North Korea has also stepped up its security measures, both to protect its dictator Kim Jong-un and to prevent news of the North Korean deployments to Russia from spreading within the highly isolated, impoverished country. To this end, North Korean officers involved in the Russian effort are banned from using phones, while families of soldiers are told that their loved ones are simply participating in a military exercise, the lawmaker said. The so-called Helsinki Commission in the U.S. Congress has approached President Biden about Ukraine. It has urged him to give Poland permission to intercept Russian missiles in Ukraine. This was reported by The Hill, which reviewed the letter from the congressmen. Leaders of the bipartisan U.S. Helsinki Commission have urged Biden to give NATO ally Poland the go-ahead to extend its air defenses over Ukraine. The article says, the congressmen noted that in this case, the Poles will be able to intercept Russian missiles flying to Ukrainian cities and villages. Such a decision will save the lives of a large number of Ukrainian citizens and will not allow the Russian Federation to destroy the country's critical infrastructure. 
The letter signed by the committee's leaders, Democrat Joe Wilson and Republican Steve Cohen, says Poland should be given the authority to intercept and destroy missiles over Ukraine, especially those that threaten to intrude into Polish airspace. Ukraine has repeatedly called on NATO countries to help intercept Russian missiles. Warsaw is also not against such a scenario. Polish Foreign Minister Radoslaw Sikorski made a similar proposal in September 2024. The idea was rejected by then NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, who explained his position by saying that the alliance thus risks becoming part of the conflict, which it is trying to avoid at all costs. Since the start of the full-scale war, Western allies have provided Ukraine with their air defense systems, including the legendary Patriots. However, it has not yet been possible to completely close the Ukrainian skies from Russian missiles and bombs. There are so few installations for such a large territory. In Congress, both parties are criticizing the White House for its hesitation in providing military support to Ukraine. For example, it is outrageous that Biden refuses to give the Ukrainian armed forces permission to strike military targets deep inside Russia with long-range missiles. According to critics, such indecisiveness on the part of the American leadership provokes Russian dictator Vladimir Putin to even greater aggression. In this context, Poland's request to intercept and neutralize missiles over Ukraine is both necessary and urgent as a mechanism to support Ukraine and protect NATO's frontline borders, Cohen and Wilson said in the letter. Russian elite military units have suffered serious losses during the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Their main task was to eliminate the Ukrainian leadership, reports the national interest. According to the media, the Russian military command intended to use these units to achieve an easy victory in Ukraine. The national interest says that the war in Ukraine is the largest conflict Russia has found itself in since World War II. As such, the Kremlin has thrown everything it has into the fight, including its elite military forces. At the onset of the conflict, the Russian High Command had planned to use its military units to bag an easy victory for the Kremlin. While Russian airborne forces paratroopers were storming the Hostomel airport next to Kiev, Spetsnaz commandos were going after Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and other high-ranking Ukrainian officials. The Kremlin wanted to decapitate the Ukrainian command and control structure at the most important point of the conflict and create chaos in its adversary. Much like Moscow's plans, the attempt to take out Zelensky and the Ukrainian leadership failed. Therefore, Russia continued to use elite special forces in the war. They have been seen in battles near Mariupol, Kherson, Lyman, Kharkiv and Kyiv. It is also stated that all but one of the five Special Forces Brigades suffered significant losses by the end of summer. In particular, one of the separate Special Forces Brigades had only 125 personnel active out of 900 deployed. This indicates that the unit lost nearly 90% of its combat personnel. In military terms, a unit that has lost almost 90% of its combat capability is deemed no longer effective and is moved from the line. But the Russian military was not dissuaded and continued to use its elite Spetsnaz forces in the conflict. Although conventional Russian troops spearheaded the three different invasion prongs, north toward Kiev, south toward Kherson and Odessa, and west toward Kharkiv, the Kremlin deployed Spetsnaz commandos every time the conventional Russian forces faced significant resistance.